Alright, what the heck is going on everybody? It's your boy, Bruce Crabshark here at Calgary Barbell, welcoming you to another fun-filled Form Check Friday. Forgot the name of the show for a second there. Anyways, what we do on this is we take your viewer submitted videos, we throw them up on the screen behind me, and we critique them. We give them the old kung fu critique. Um, and we try to help y'all be better lifters. So hopefully you find some good value in uh, in the information today. Let's dive on in. This is Tanner. We left off with Tanner last time talking about his elbow tucking, right? So for those of you who don't know and maybe can't see, because it looks like Tanner filmed this in a sauna, um, his elbows are really, really tucked in, right? So. When we talk about the shoulder movement and the bench, one of the things we talk about is rotation. So watch my fist. Internal rotation is like this, which is gonna make your elbow point out and up. External rotation at the shoulder is gonna be down like this, and it's gonna make your elbow point down. Generally speaking, when we're over tucked, we're too externally rotated. The elbow comes down in front of the bar and creates this sort of out of line pattern from the wrist to the elbow. So what are the ways that we fix this? Number one, we can just cue the lifter to push his elbows out a little bit, right? Think about pulling the bar apart. Think about pushing the elbows out towards your sides without losing that shoulder tension because we want to keep that upper back tension, right? That external rotation cue is really good for creating a lot of tension in the upper back. The other thing I'm going to recommend, and y'all knew this was coming, is I'm gonna recommend you try widening your grip. A lot of the times with a really narrow grip, we tend to be a little more tucked in. With a wider grip, as the grip goes out wider, the rotation demand changes in the shoulder. So it could be, I mean, right now it looks like you're quite narrow, right? If we imagine, I'm imagining that this mark here is the ring. So you're a solid like two centimeters, maybe even three centimeters inside of the ring, which is a very narrow grip bench. So, if we go a little bit wider, we still have room to be a narrow grip bench. I'm not saying you need to go, you know, like max grip width, bulldog grip, huge arch, like, you know, bench like the internet trolls hate. Um, but if you go a little bit wider, it might sort of intuitively put your elbows in a, in a position where you're going to have a little more stacked elbow and wrist position throughout the bench. So, yeah. Also, I think there were probably... I don't know because I'm recording this the same day as the last form check, but there were probably some great suggestions on the last video from our viewers on how they dealt with elbow tuck before. So go check that out for sure. All right, uh, David. David's doing some bench press. I see he's uh, he's gone Super Saiyan or something like that. Um, I think that's a Dragon Ball Z thing, right? Right? All right. Um, <laughs> Uh, so he just turned 16. Uh, his numbers are 105, 67.5, and 140. Um, he's been powerlifting since March, and this is some paused sumo work at 110. So unfortunately, David, you kind of film this from an angle where you can't really see a lot of what's going on with your body, man. Uh, as soon as that bar comes off the floor, it pretty much blocks off the majority of your, your body through the lift. So looks like we're doing a pretty good job with the back position. My concern would be what are the knees doing? Right, uh, we had a bit, pretty, pretty decent little spiel uh, about a lifter last week, a younger guy whose knees were kind of in like this. Right, if these are your feet and these are your knees, having this like inward movement in the knee, a lot of the times is kind of limiting when it comes to to positioning and, and power off the floor. So, I would film some lifts from the front. Or I would get yourself like a little collapsible phone tripod so you can film from like two feet above where we are now, right? Because, you know, watch as this bar goes up, can't see a thing, can't see a thing. And then we get to lockout and it looks like, it looks like you're kind of pretty far on the insides of your feet. And it looks like maybe the knees are still a little bit turned in at lockout, which is causing you to be a little forward. Like I, I would love to be able to see more of this. 
It looks like you, like I said, it looks like you do have the basics down, but as you come off the floor, you're definitely coming forward. So my recommendations here, based on what I can't really see, so I'm, I'm just doing my best here with a bit of a shot in the dark, David, is I would say narrow the stance a little bit. Think about cueing your knees out a little bit, not a lot, a little bit. And let's try to keep even pressure between the front and the back of the foot. As you pull the bar off the floor, I don't want you to get pulled forward. I want you to keep some heel tension and I want you to keep a good sort of balance between heel and toe. And dude, keep it up. I wish I was powerlifting when I was 16. Keep doing your thing, dude. Stoked. Makes me stoked to see young, young people getting into lifting. All right, this is Marcus. Looks like another relatively young guy. Marcus uh, says squat is his weakest lift. He feels like he's not tight enough out of the hole. He said he is shaky, uh, sometimes doesn't hit depth, and that he's working on his bracing. So he said he still feels the need for improvement. All right, so right now, um, there are a few really common things that I see beginners do. And one of the things that I see beginners do a lot is, is be super, super extended, and they're looking like way up. You're kind of doing the exact opposite. Uh, you're looking like, I don't, I don't know, are you looking like back here between your legs or something? You're looking very, very far down. So what I want you to do is imagine, you know, like that's, that's your back. Right now, this is your back and this is your neck so that you can like look down. So what I would probably advise you to do is if this is your back, look like that, right? So instead of looking here, look out here, maybe kind of at the bottom there so that you're not looking at the mirror. I understand the, the desire to not look at the mirror and maybe that's, maybe we're kind of like overcompensating or, or like, um, yeah, yeah, kind of overcorrecting is maybe the better word. Maybe we're kind of overcorrecting because we don't want to be looking in the mirror and I get that and I think that's, that's okay, that's good. Um, but I would still want to look a little higher than what you're doing right now. Because I think what we're effectively doing right now is the elbows are way up behind us. We're looking really far down. That's probably going to mean the shoulders are shrugged up, which is going to mess with your brace. So I really think we could probably widen the grip a little bit. Try to pull these elbows in line with your trunk and pull the chin and the head back a little bit so it's more in line with your upper back. Then squat deeper. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of cues for like, oh, I'm having a hard time hitting depth other than just squat deeper. It doesn't look like you're being limited. It doesn't look like you're absolutely bottoming out or hitting the bottom. I think you're getting a bit hesitant. Um, and you can see on some of these reps, like you're already, you're changing where you're looking. You're going from looking down to looking up. So it's not even a static head position, right? As you come up, you're kind of throwing your head back into it a little bit. So I think we could definitely do a little bit of a better job there. And that's probably most of what I would take out of this. You're doing a good job with your feet. You're staying relatively well planted, well balanced. I've also talked before about how a lot of the times, uh, if we're having issues hitting depth and feeling tight, we can play with the stance width. Generally speaking, this is a, a rough heuristic or, or like general rule, but a little bit narrower is gonna be a little bit tighter, but it's gonna be harder to hit depth. A little bit wider is gonna be a little bit looser, but it's gonna be a little easier to hit depth. So. In your case, you might want to stay here because you said you're feeling, you know, shaky as well uh, and not tight enough out of the holes. You might even want to go narrower, but you do have to squat a little deeper. So I think just working on that, filming yourself from what I call the honesty angle, which is getting a camera at hip height, filming straight into you from straight on the side. Uh, and that's, that's the honesty angle. So check that out. Uh, and I think there's some, I think I gave you some tips there. Hopefully that helps. All right, this is Samir. Samir is doing some deadlifts. Uh, three years into lifting, switched from conventional to sumo eight months ago. Welcome to the dark side, my friend. Feels stronger in sumo. Doesn't plan to compete. Uh, oh yeah, he's got those Sabo deadlift pros too. Those are my, those are my shoes, dude. Um, hips move up slightly after he lowers into position and he says he also feels stronger with a bit of a narrower stance. Oh man. So he says he says that uh, like he doesn't really get that leg press feeling until his hips kind of come up just slightly off the floor. Dude, these are wonderful deadlifts. 
These are wonderful. That slight little bit of hip shift or hip, hip movement I don't think is really holding you back. I don't think that's something that I would jump on and be like, oh, we gotta fix that. I mean, if you want to, if you wanna try to eliminate that, just try pulling your, your hips down and back more instead of down and down. Do you know what I mean? Like instead of pulling your hips down as far, think about pulling them down, excuse me, to a point and then back. Because I feel like you're getting into a fantastic position here. The big important thing is as the hips come up, catch the weight with your lats, right? Don't let it pull your shoulders and your upper body forward. That's the number one thing I see happening when people have their hip come up behind them and it does become a problem. It's often because it's pulled that shoulder blade and that shoulder joint forward over the bar, which causes the lifter to get pulled forward. We end up on our toes a little bit, but it looks like, so first rep, you do a really good job of that. But just imagine like as the hips come up, we have to counterbalance that with pressure downwards and tightness in the lats, right? Like you're pulling your shoulder blade down into your butt, down into your back pocket. So right there, catch it with your lats and straight up. It's a good rep. Yeah, overall, really, really good deadlift smear. I wouldn't be worried about the narrowness of your stance. I think that's a strong position for you. Like I said, I would just really work on trying to keep those lats tight as that shift happens. Not only will that minimize the shift, but it'll minimize the impact of the shift. And if the, sh if the shift is less impactful, then uh, I think the shift is less of a big deal. So. Yeah. All right, this is Will. Will's 16 years old. He said he would like to compete one day. He has problems hitting depth. He tried widening his stance, but he gets hip pain, and he says he still has some pain with this stance even. Um, and he also has some issues with doing, some, doing the squat morning. All right, so Will, number one, if you wanna squat deeper, you gotta squat deeper. Right, we're kind of getting tossed around by the weight, tossed around by the bar a little bit out of the bottom. So I think the biggest thing you can do right now as a, as a young guy just getting into the sport, wanting to compete one day, just take like a plate off the bar, just squat nice and deep. That's the other thing. So when it comes to, to, to pain issues, and we talk about this all of the time, we got a big video coming on this as soon as we get into the new space, which we should be getting into before long here. Um, November 1st, we should be able to start production in there, which would be great. Um, anyways, what was I saying? When it comes to pain, there's probably going to be a, a point in your training session where, okay, we've gotten to the weight where this pain starts to show up. Train below that for now, for now. And then slowly over time, increase the weight to get back to where you are. Generally speaking, if you're running into pain, the biggest reason that, you know, lifters run into pain issues is just fatigue management, load management, those kinds of things. Just not being as well adapted as we could. So I think if you pull the weight back, it's going to allow you to hit depth a lot easier. It's probably going to allow you to train around your pain instead of through it, because at 16, you don't need to be training through pain. Um, the other thing is, yeah, yeah, get those, get those rack heights down one man. I would rather see you unrack from a little bit too low than a little bit too high. If we watch here, you're having to go up onto your tippy toes. You're having to like shrug the bar up and then re-brace out of the rack, out of the rack. So well, uh, you don't want to have to mess with that, man. Put these one lower, even if it means you have to like do a quarter squat to get it out of the rack. <clears throat> it's just going to be safer and it's gonna waste a lot less energy. It's gonna allow you to get braced better into the bar before you pick it up. Um, yeah, like your brace looks good. Your descent looks good. We're just cutting it high. So take some weight off, squat a little lower, learn to uh, you know work around your pain instead of through it, and take your time, my dude. Take your time, right? A lot of these reps, because we're cutting them at like a, kind of an awkward angle, we're losing that brace, the bar's pulling us forward. So like I was telling Samir, we gotta, we gotta be tighter in the lats. We gotta be tighter, keeping that bar pulled into our shelf. So I think there's a number of things that'll honestly probably just fall in line if you just deload a little bit and work your way back up slowly, right? Deload a little bit, work your way back up slowly. Trust me on this. I know you don't want to. I know you don't want to because you're 16. And um, if you're anything like I was when I was 16, 
uh, I probably knew better than anyone else. I'm not saying that you're that guy, but uh, I think that's a pretty common attitude for younger people. Maybe I'm just being ageist, but um, yeah, man, just deload the bar a little bit, even like 245 or something like that. Learn to squat a little bit deeper, work around your pain, and uh, you know, be a monster by the time you're 18 because you were slow with your progression and patient and well adapted and you weren't in pain. That's how that works. All right, this is Lucas. He's doing some deadlifts. Uh, he's from Brazil, so shout outs to Brazil. Uh, 100 kilos for, he says, five to seven reps. Now, I'm not sure that this is the first time I've, get, I've had somebody give me a weight, uh, a rep range. Um, but yeah, all that's, that's all he said. Uh, also that he liked Chris Bumstead. So it looks like we're doing some stiff-legged deadlifts here. And I'm going to leave this one to our wonderful viewers to go ahead and head down in the comment section below. Leave your critiques for our man Lucas here and uh, help him get into the sport of powerlifting a little bit, right? What does he need to do? How does he need to uh, work on this deadlift to make it work a little bit better for powerlifting maybe? All right. Leave those comments below. And one last thing before we wrap up here. I want anybody who's still watching, I want to I wanna give you a quick pitch on the Calorie Barbell app. Now, it's a fantastic resource for those who are looking for maybe uh, a little bit more of an independent kind of coaching. So you still have access to myself and the coaches via private Discord. You have access to 14 of our programs right now with more being added regularly and form checks like the one I did today. If you like that style of help and coaching, uh, I do that two to three times. I'll go through every submission in our Discord, make a video just like this, and post it for those members specifically, just like I do for my one-on-one -on -one coaching clients. And um, yeah, if you're interested in that, it does help the channel out a lot. It's, I think, a great resource. I think it's a fair price. And it uh, saves us from having to advertise, I don't know, body wash or something to you. So go ahead and head into the comments, or not into the comments, into the description box below. Check that out. It's caloriebarbell.programs.app. And we'll see you all in the next one next week. Bye-bye.